That's right. <clears throat> well, turn with, you, with us tonight, please, to Genesis, the first chapter, and then also 1 Corinthians 2. Genesis 1, 1 Corinthians 2. If you didn't bring a Bible with you, our ushers are here in the aisle uh, holding up Bibles. Use one of ours. Hold up your hand. Take the time. Turn. Find the Scripture. Genesis 1, 1 Corinthians 2. If you're watching by uh, internet tonight, get your Bible out and don't be distracted by a bunch of other things. Uh, the measure of attention and faith you give the Word is the measure of light and revelation and blessing you get out of it. If you barely pay attention to it, then that's about what you get out of it. But the more you're able to focus and remind yourself uh, that this is not the words of men. This is God's Word, and it's life to me. It's health to all my flesh, strength to my spirit. It's light to me. It gives me understanding. Genesis 1, and then we'll be going to 1 Corinthians 2 for several weeks now. We've been on the subject of the moving of the Spirit. The moving of the Spirit. Genesis 1, verse 1, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. The Spirit of God did what? Moved. moved. Now this is verse 2. Right? <clears throat> verse 3, and God said, there's the word. God said, let there be light. And what happened? Miracle, we would say. Manifestation of God's creative power. And not uh, just the initial creation, but how many notice today that that light is still shining? <clears throat> Did you notice that? It's still shining right now. We're just facing away from it for a few hours. Right? <clears throat> You know, flying, I always enjoy, especially, you know, if it's, if it's wintertime and you've had a bunch of cloudy days in a row and it's kind of dreary and it has been day after day, you get in a good fast airplane and pull the power on and just in a few minutes, boom, you pop out and there's that sunshine. It was always there. It was just something between you and it. I'm going to know that preach right there, you know. Yeah. The son of righteousness has arisen. And there is healing in his wings or in the, the beams that radiate from him. And he's always on. He doesn't have to have downtime. He never sleeps, he never slumbers, he's always on. I know uh, some years ago, it was a, a lady was trying to take me to task about speaking in tongues. And she says, uh, well, you just believe you can talk in tongues anytime you get ready to. I said, well, yeah. <laughs> and I quoted her. Heard the scripture in First Corinthians. He says, uh, "What is it then? I'll uh, speak with the Spirit, and I'll speak with the understanding also. I'll sing with the Spirit. I'll sing with the understanding also." I said, "You know, could I say I'm going to sing with the understanding right now and just sing?" Well, he said, "You can do the same thing with your spirit, didn't he?" And I said, "Yeah." I said, "You can. I do." 
She said, ah, no, no, no. Now, you, you can't just turn the Holy Ghost off and on whenever you get ready to. I said, uh, he's always on. <laughs> and he is. He's always, even when you're laying in the bed sound asleep, he's not sleeping. He's in you. He's alive. He's always on. And any time you get ready to yield to him, he'll give you utterance. It's not a matter of turning him off and on. He's always on. Well, she didn't quite know what to do with that, but she said, well, I don't believe it that way. Well, it's sad because she could be edifying herself all the time. And uh, that's the way it is. The sun is always shining. We may be turned away from it and it be dark, or there may be all kind of clouds between us and it. And you can say, well, the sun's not shining today. Oh, yeah, it is. Oh, yeah, it's shining perfectly. You just don't see it because there's something between you and it. And if you're having a bad day, it's not because God's having a bad day. Oh, did you get this now? If you're having a weak day, it's not because God is experiencing technical difficulties. He's just fine. His power is 100%, right? His life, his joy, his peace, his light is shining full force. It's just that you've let something get in between you and him, right? And cloud up your day. And in the name of Jesus, and with some obedience and faith, you can get her cleared up. Can you say amen? Because the Word of God is more than enough to do it, and the Spirit of God is ready. Amen. Just like right here, He was hovering over the face of the deep. Why? Why, why is He there? Why is He hovering? There's, can, can, you, can you sense um, the, the anticipation? Can you? I can when I read this. I, why is he there? We, we, so we looked up the word in earlier studies, if you weren't here, and, and this word that he, he was over the face of the deep, it's like the word hover. Well, why? I mean, that, that denotes something's about to happen. Right? What was about to happen? Well, the very next phrase, God said something. Well, we know that the word of God is a person. Right? Jesus, the Word, became flesh and dwelt among us. So we see the Father God, we see the Holy Spirit, we see the Word Jesus, and we see creative power manifested. We'd say miracles. Glory to God. Has He changed? No, He hasn't changed. He's the same. He operates the same. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The Spirit of God is doing the same thing. The Word of God has the same effect. When the Word of God was spoken and released, the Spirit of God moved and brought forth what was said. Now go on over to uh, 1 Corinthians 2, please. 1 Corinthians 2. First Corinthians two. And verse four. He said, My speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. The power of God. Well, when we experience the power of God, who did we experience? The power of God, the glory of God, 
is a manifestation of the Spirit of God. See, he just got through saying, not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in what? In demonstration of the Spirit and power. Somebody said, boy, whew, I sense the power. What else could you say? Sense the Spirit, right? This, uh, the power is a manifestation of the person, of the Holy Spirit. Now, something very important here. All of us are in the process of, of learning this and growing in this. If you want to see more results in your life, in your ministry, you must learn about this. He said, my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but my, my speech and my preaching was in demonstration of the Spirit and power. Let me say that another way. Or I'll, I'll ask you a question. What was he relying on for the people to get it? Wasn't he saying, I'm not relying on my ability as a communicator? I'm not relying on my education, Amen. on my vocabulary. Amen. Oh, did you hear this now? But I'm relying on the Spirit of God to demonstrate it and to manifest the power and make it happen. Oh, can you see this? You'll find when you begin to get frustrated in talking to people, that should be an indicator to you that you're relying on yourself to get it done. And of course, this applies, first of all, to preachers and teachers, because that's what he's talking about, his preaching and teaching. But then it applies to everybody. But preachers and teachers, I know, man, you know, do, do not think that you are alone in feeling like you didn't do a good enough job when you get through. Any preachers and teachers in here that after you've gotten through, you came back and felt lousy about what you had said or done. Yeah, I see people nodding their heads all over. Sometimes you feel better about it than other times. But the devil, one of his favorite things is to come and tell you, that was lousy. Man, I mean, what were you thinking? <laughs> they should have had somebody else up there. On and on. What, what's he trying to do, though? Why would he care? He wants to discourage you. Because you, you listen to enough of that, you'll lose your confidence. If you lose your confidence, then you're not ministering in faith. Let me tell you something that's very true that you may not be thinking about. How would you know the effectiveness? How would you know? Just let's take me and you right here, right tonight. We don't even know who's in this service. We got Faith Life e members from China and Russia. South America, Canada, everywhere. Do we know what's going on with everybody? No. Do we know what certain verses and what certain illustrations mean to them? No. Would we know how pertinent it might be? Or how God may have already been talking to them about that very thing for the last three weeks? And the Lord have us say it again tonight, and it might not mean anything to the first 200 people right here, but there may be somebody in China doing flips. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? And sometimes people sit through something, some part of a service, and go, oh, ho hum. I've heard Brother Keith tell that before. Well, you're not the only one here, honey. Uh, 
And there are people that are hearing these things for the very first time. And there's some people that have heard them a hundred times, but still, they're hearing them tonight for the very first time. So how, what, did you hear what I'm saying? How would I know? How would I know? How would any preacher or teacher know? We do know that he said his word will not return void. It will accomplish what he sent it to do. It will prosper. Hmm? We know that. I said, we know that. And the more that I and you, we're relying, not on what we can do, but we're relying on the Spirit of God to dim Even if I don't do it exactly right, we're believing Him to make it up. Do you hear what I'm saying now? Even if, if you or somebody else didn't hear it right or you wasn't quite focused like you should be, we're believing in the grace and mercy of God for Him, the Holy Ghost, to take it. And you might not even see it tonight, but three days from now. Something you heard tonight, he could bring to you, and you might have yawned through it tonight. But next week, you may just go ballistic and go, glory to God, why didn't I see that then? Because it cooked in you. Stewed in you. Until here came the light. Mm -mm -mm. Do you hear what he's saying? My, I was not depending on my ability to talk to you and quote scripture to you, preach to you. I was depending. I was relying on the Spirit of God. Let, let me let, back up to the first verse of this because you, you really get more of this when you read this whole thing. Chapter 2, verse 1. I, brethren, when I came to you, I came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, Declaring to you the testimony of God. Now, how many understand? No, who, Paul, excuse, excuse me, the Spirit of God is speaking this through Paul. Paul was an educated man. By his own words, he says that he had risen to the top in his religious uh, intellectual pool. He was the star of the Pharisees. He was their bright, young star. He was brilliant. He was educated at the best schools. He knew multiple languages. He could speak. You know that, right? And yet, he learned something after he got saved. And listen how he talks now. He said, when I came to you, I didn't come. With all that stuff I learned in li linguistics. I didn't come. With all those things and papers I wrote on philosophy. Verse 2. I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Oh my, my. All right, can, can you see something here? Are you reminded of what we've already talked about in, the, in this? What is the ministry of the Holy Spirit? Huh? He manifests the Word of God and He what? He magnifies and glorifies Jesus. You want to be involved in the moving of the Spirit? You've got you to be like Paul here that you, you don't know anything except Jesus. How are people going to get healed next Friday night? Me and you could pull every lever and push every button and do everything we ever thought or heard and have nothing happen. Or we could come in here completely dependent on Him, relying on Him for every word that everybody's going to say and every note that everybody's going to play and sing, relying on Him to reach through these cameras and reach into people's homes, relying on the Holy Ghost to demonstrate and power 
and for him to get all the glory, all the glory, all the glory. The more serious we are about the word being manifested and Jesus being magnified, the more usable we are. The more spirit movement friendly this church is. <laughs> Can you see that? He said, I determined. See, he knew a lot of stuff. But he said, I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling. He's talking about his natural man. And you, in order to be useful to the Lord, you have to realize that you can't do it. As long as you think you can, you're in his way. He said, and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but it was in demonstration of the Spirit and power that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. They didn't leave those meetings going, boy, that Paul is smart. <laughs> Man, I mean, he's a giant in intellect. They did not leave impressed with Paul. How'd they leave? They left. Not faith in the wisdom of men, but they left with faith in what? Faith in the power of God. They had experienced the moving of the Spirit. They had experienced the presence of God. They had things go off inside them that nobody even said. That Paul didn't even say out of his mouth. But while he was talking about one thing, the Holy Ghost took that and revealed something else to them. And they left going, whoo, the Spirit of God is mighty. And the power of God is real. Say it out loud, I have faith. I have faith. In, the power of God. in the power of God. Say that again. I have faith in the power of God. Of God, say it again. I have faith in the power of God. The power of God to save. The power of God to heal. The power of God to deliver. I have faith in the power of God. Are you believing together with me, with us, that the power of God increases? In our services, stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger until even people that were skeptics and, and doubters leave going, well, I'll tell you one thing, that was real, buddy. <laughs> we don't care if they remember my name or yours. Really don't care. Oh, but we want them to leave impressed with God. As they lay in their bed that night and the next and the next just going, man, that was real. God, you are real. Mm, can't get away from it. That's the will of God. That he might be glorified. Turn on over to the uh, 12th chapter of 1 Corinthians. Here we see the demonstration of the Spirit and power. 1 Corinthians 12. He says, verse 1, concerning spirituals, I wouldn't have you ignorant. And then he tells us how we can tell the difference between what really is the Spirit of God and what's not. <coughs> Excuse me, no wrong spirit is going to glorify Jesus. And nobody speaking by the Spirit of God is going to say anything derogatory about Jesus. Right? And see, this is how he starts off this chapter that covers the nine prominent ways that the Holy Spirit moves or manifests himself. 
before he gets into that, he talks about how that the Spirit of God honors Jesus. Can you see this now? He goes on to say, uh, well, let me just read it. Verse 4, there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of administrations, or the margin says ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operation, but it's the same God who works all in all. And the, But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. The what? Now we just got through reading demonstration. Here it says the... See, we're talking about the moving of the Spirit. Well, how does he move? Well, he demonstrates things, and he manifests things. What does manifest mean? To show, to reveal, to make known. Well, what, what he shows, what he reveals, what he makes known, what he demonstrates, is it going to be a manifestation of the Word? Is it going to glorify Jesus and magnify him. What does magnify mean? It, ca- it means to cause one to respect more, to esteem more. Oh, did you get that now? See, when the Spirit of God really moved strong in a place, and it really was the Spirit of God, people leave more with more respect and more honor and more faith in Jesus. If people just leave more enamored with people, with flesh, then I don't care what, it, what they did, it wasn't really the Spirit of God. He said the manifestation of the Spirit. And he goes through them. He says, to one is given the word of wisdom. To another, the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the same Spirit. Does the Spirit of God move in healing? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. He's going to move Friday night too, next Friday night. To another, the working of miracles. Does he move in miracles? Yes. You know, healing is the restoration or renewal of the body from some sickness or weakness. But then miracle can come when something has been uh, destroyed or even removed or wasn't there from birth. God can create it. Right? Creative miracle. Or when a heart maybe has just been destroyed from multiple attacks and what have you, God can uh, restore that thing. To where it's just like new. Or where something was missing, he can put it back. Can he? Certainly he can. It's easy for him. It's easy for him. So we see both gifts of, actually in the the original, uh, it's both of them's plural. Gifts of healings. Both plural. And also, He talked about working the miracles. Let's talk about that some more tonight. How about it? Let's stir ourselves up and get ready for our meeting, right? Our our service next week. Feed our faith. How does faith come? It comes by hearing. Stirring ourselves up. Because we're not just going to be believing for ourselves. We're going to be believing for all kind of people all over the world. A lot of them, most of them we'll never see in this lifetime. But they're liable to come and talk to you in heaven a long time from now. So, you don't know me, but I got healed in that service that night. And instead of dying prematurely, I was able to serve the Lord another 20 years. I want to I wanna show you some of the fruit that's up here in heaven. Out of those 20 years, and y'all are a part of it. Because I was about ready to quit. And God did a miracle in my body. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. See, people try to tell us, but well, healing is not, you know, it's not that big of a deal. God doesn't really care about the body. Oh, yeah. It's bigger of a deal than you think. 
Why are we even here on the planet? You got to have a body to be here, to stay here. You say, well, I'll just die and go to heaven. Well, you'll get to do that soon enough. No need rushing it. Well, it's a lot nicer there than it is here. I know that. Oh, but here is where the action is. And what's happening now is going to determine what goes on there and the rewards and the places. Man, ain't, ain't no time to just be crying and saying, come, Jesus, come right now, right now. Get me out of here. I got bills that are due. That's being defeated. He's coming back for a glorious church, overcoming church, a church with its foot on the devil's neck. Oh, can you hear me now? Gathering in the fruit, the precious fruit of the earth. See, you don't know what God could do with a healing. One person get healed. And their family were unbelievers. Did you hear me now? And they see and know this is a miracle of God. They can't deny it. There it is standing in front of them. And they have to reassess what they thought. They could wind up getting saved. They could wind up having a ministry. Do you see what I'm talking about? Where does it end? You don't know a fraction of it in this life. Healing is important. I said healing is important. Us living our full term down here. Us us running our whole race. Us being unhindered, unimpeded. You do realize that if if you're just half alive, you're not going to be able to work in the ministry to the extent, to the degree that you should. If you spend more time in, in the doctor's office, then, then you do praying or in ministry or doing something else, it's a hindrance to you. All your money is spent on medicine. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, it goes on and on. It, it, it's a, it's a, a thing of the enemy to choke you, to restrict you. And you've got some confused preachers that'll tell you God put this on you. He's teaching you, well, why in the world would God give us the Great Commission? You're talking about a job, reach the whole world with the gospel, and then he's going to make you so sick and broke that you can't leave the house. (laughs) And if you could, you don't feel like it. And if you felt a little better, you you couldn't afford to. You see what I'm talking about? It doesn't make sense. No, God's not getting glory out of you and me being incapacitated and sick and weak and broke. That's a lie of the devil. Don't you believe it? No, he wants you strong. He wants you prosperous. He wants you with plenty of strength and plenty of resources and to go plenty of years and do your job in the earth. And take a lot of fruit with you when you go. And when you leave, you leave aged and full and satisfied. Hallelujah. You've done everything you're supposed to do. Then you go enjoy heaven. Not before. Can you say amen? If that requires healing and overcoming and and miracles in finance, then God is well able to do it. Well able to do it. And the Spirit of God moves in these areas. Part of the way areas that He moves is in healing and in miracles. Go with me, if you would, to uh, the book of Acts, the 10th chapter. You got time for some more? Uh, the Lord's helping us tonight. Acts chapter 10. Acts 
Acts chapter 10. You know this, but let's uh, remind ourselves of it. Acts 10, Peter's preaching. And in Acts 10 and uh, 37, <coughs> well, excuse me, 36 we'll start with. He said, the word which God sent to the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. Notice how he starts off. He said, the word that he sent. Now, let's back up all the way to Genesis. When did we see the Spirit move? When the word came forth. Now, we see him, and he's over the face of the deep, but what's he doing? That we, we don't see manifestation. We don't see demonstration. We don't see it. We see him there. But then when the word came forth, we see power. And when you see the power of God manifested, the Holy Ghost is there. That's him. That's him. And here the word was sent. Verse 37 that word, I say, you know, which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Power. <laughs> power. Holy Ghost and power. Did you know he doesn't go anywhere without his power? But can he be somewhere and the power not be in manifestation? Yes, he can. Uh, thousands of churches are testimony of that. And the Bible even talked about in the latter days, there'd be a whole group of folks that they have a form of godliness, but what? They deny the power. They say, no, 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 no. We don't believe in all that. Who? that's <laughs> power. What kind of power are you talking about? Holy Ghost power. You mean, you mean real power? Yeah. Power. Oh, we don't know about all that. That scares folks. And, and we think we know something about it. And I tell you, we know precious little. We know so little. But I am believing the Lord that he manifests himself to the extent we get an education. But I, let me warn you now, a lot of the ways he moves is different than how you thought or how I thought. And we may be going, whoa, wow. <laughs> and there are ways he can move that in a, in a second or two, every one of us have our nose in the carpet going, cool, <laughs> glory to God, the Lord, he is God. <laughs> but do you desire it? Do you desire and hunger for the real manifestation of the true spirit of God? It'll manifest the word. The, the, the power manifestation will magnify Jesus. Oh, can you see it? Keep reading. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing. Healing, 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 all, A-L-L, -L, all, all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Man, if you didn't know, but just that one verse, just this one verse, you ought to know it's God's will for you to be healed. If you just, just one verse. Here, all the people that were sick that got healed under Jesus' ministry, and that's a lot of people. 
That's a lot of people. All of them were said to be oppressed of the devil. So, man, it's, it's blasphemous to try to say God put it on them when the Bible very plainly says the devil was oppressing them. And he healed them. So I said, well, now, he just did that to prove that he's the son of God. No, uh-uh. No. You hadn't got to heal everybody to prove that point. You take a few outstanding cases, right? And you say, I'm going to prove to you that I am who I say I am there. And if he's doing that, then he failed to do it in his own hometown. Because the Bible said he could there do no mighty works. And they were challenging, they were challenging him. They were going, prove it. They were throwing down the gauntlet. They were saying, prove it. We've heard about all this stuff that's happened with you in other places. Do it right here in your own hometown. Prove it. And he didn't. I said he didn't. No, no. He said, I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. What are we looking at? We are looking every time he's, somebody was healed under his ministry, we're looking at the will of God. The unchanging will of God for all people for all time. How did he do it? He did it by the Holy Ghost. He did it by the power of God that was on him. Oh, can you say amen? amen. Healed all who were oppressed. Has that changed for today? Turn back just a few pages to the fourth chapter. And realize that now reading in the fourth chapter here, this is after Jesus has gone to the cross. This is after he's been raised from the dead. This is after he has ascended up on high. So he's, he's got nothing to prove. And he's not even on the earth personally. The Spirit of God is. But in the church, do we still see healing? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Why? Because it's the will of God. And we see the disciples get called on the carpet over a healing. You know, if you'll be honest and read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and Acts and put a big star or underline everywhere something said about healing, you're going to come away with a revelation. <laughs> healing is big time important to Jesus. It's a big part of the gospel. It's a big part of the church. And people who try to explain it away are ignoring realms of Scripture. Here, a man gets healed. You remember the lame man at the gate called Beautiful? Everybody knew he was crippled. Everybody knew he'd been that way for all those years. Everybody saw him every day. It's an outstanding thing. And there he is jumping around and running and walking. And everybody knows it's got to be a miracle. Well, it shook the whole city. Does God still do things like this today? Could God heal some people in this town or in towns on the other side of the planet and shake villages? Hmm? There, there are people where they themselves, the leader of the, uh, the county or the lead, leader of the village or the leader of the city, or some cases leader of the country, they themselves are very ill. Or their spouse or their child is very ill and a miraculous healing of these people would shake a whole nation. Overnight, it would change policy. <laughs> You've read in the book of Acts, haven't you? How whole cities were turned and changed by healings and miracles. God hasn't changed the way he operates. People have changed. People have gotten cold and backslid and, and gone to seminary and explained it away. 
But God has not changed. This is still the way he gets a hold of people and shows them his goodness. I know uh, Phyllis and I were talking <clears throat> just recently. And uh, somebody had said something negative about some of our blessings. Well, that's not the first time. <coughs> but I thought to myself, I thought, I, I began to ponder, I thought, why? Why would people even care? You know, it's, su it's such a deal with healing and with prosperity. Have you noticed it? Oh, man. People, they, they want to fight you on healing. They want to fight you on prosperity. <coughs> and I thought, <coughs> excuse me, I thought, why? Why? And then I realized it's not the people. They're yielding to it, but it's the enemy behind them. But still I'm thinking, why? Why is that such a big deal to the devil? Why does he care so much? Whether I'm prosperous or not. <laughs> why does it, you know, why? And the Lord spoke to me. I'm going to tell you what he said. The Lord spoke to me. He said, he doesn't want the people to see my goodness. Amen. And oh, those two areas, you see the goodness of God. Where in healing, oh, you see the goodness of God. And in the prostrate, uh, the devil doesn't want people to know that God actually wants your bills paid. And he wants you to be better off and he wants to bless you with good stuff. And uh, Oh, the devil doesn't want people to see that. Because he's got a lot of people convinced if you're really going to have something, you got to live like the devil. Yeah, if you're going to have any stuff. It's a lie. And the goodness of God, what does it do? It leads people to repent. That's what all this is over. And that's why you got to be prosperous. You got to be so prosperous that everybody's talking about it. Yeah, let them talk. Because when they're talking, what, what's going on? They may be saying something negative, but somebody else heard them. And they're going to go home and think, well, now, huh. Reckon, could it be that God really did that for them? Could it be God really heal you? It'll lead people to repentance, right and left. You got to be so healed. You got to be so prosperous and make no apology for it. You stand right up, go, yeah, yeah. We're rich, yeah. And just as healed as can be. Yeah, we're healed and rich. You see, people, that they think we're ashamed of it. See, that, that's part of the deal with, with ministers. People, you know, the, somebody wants to say something the other day about something we, we had. And uh, Phyllis told him, sir, we told all our people about this. We tell them about this. We get a new ring. We get a new uh, a watch or something or a new piece of jewelry or a new car. We tell y'all. And they, they act like, well, we're going we're gonna to tell this. was well, So the whole church already knows. <laughs> you ain't going to hide it? No. No, because like priest, like people, the scriptures say. You listen now, the better off we are, you and I are connected. We're all connected. Did you hear me now? But it's not just me. I'm not to hide the prosperity or the healing, nor are you. No excuses, no watering it down, no hiding it. Right? I ride that bright yellow motorcycle y'all bought me with all the chrome on it. I ride it. Boy, it hurt your eyes in the sunlight almost. I ride, ride. Whoo, Brother Keith, that's a little loud, ain't it? Yeah, ain't it pretty? That's that expensive road. Yeah, that top, top dollar. That thing's kind of high in it. Yeah, pretty high. Church gave me that. I reckon they want me to ride it. 
They paid for it. <laughs> Healing and prosperity. Don't be ashamed of it. Don't hide it. Why? Because people are, see, people think folk like me or, or you either one uh, are like them. They hide their prosperity. They don't want people to know how well they're doing. They hide it. There was some people cornered Brother Jesse a while back. I told you about it, but there was some uh, television folk, and they're trying to want to make a deal. They said, we hear that y'all are doing real well. He said, no. They said, huh? We heard that you were doing quite well financially. He said, no. He said, we're doing a lot better than that. <laughs> people don't know what to do with that because they think that in your heart, you really feel like it's wrong. And so you're trying to hide it like they would do. But no, God is a good God. He will heal you. He'll make you rich. And he'll make you whole. And when people really begin to see how good God is, all the devils in hell can't hold them back and all the lies from all the centuries will fall off and they'll run to a good God like this. Can you say amen? amen? Say it out loud. Proclaim it out loud. Say, I will not hide the goodness of God. I will not be ashamed. Of the blessing of the Lord. Of the of the Lord. I, will tell I will tell. Of his goodness to me. Goodness to me. I, will tell I will tell. Of his healing. Of his healing. I, will tell I will tell. Of his blessing. Of his blessing. I, will I will proclaim. The goodness. The goodness. Of, the Lord. of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 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 Who thank you. Did you get what we're saying now? God gives you that new car. He puts you in that big house. Huh? He, he helps you put that big offering into the kingdom. Right? You going to hide it? Somebody says, whoo, man, that's a nice car. What do you say? Yeah, ain't it pretty? <laughs> well, it costs a lot of money, I bet. Yeah, good bit. But the Lord helped me. The Lord did it for me. Right? Yes. Not ashamed. Don't try to hide. Don't try to make a bunch of excuses. Give Him all the glory. Can you say amen? amen. Who healed you? He gets the glory. Who met your needs? Who took care of you? He did. He did. He did. He did. And we are not ashamed. I don't know if I'm expressing this properly. I'm believing God, though. You see, it's a matter of, of what you believe. See, so many other Christians who don't believe this, they think that we really feel bad about this prosperity, we just don't want to show it like them. <laughs> they do. They feel like, you know, yeah, you ought to be ashamed and you ought not have that and you ought to feel, you feel guilty and feel ashamed for having that because they do. And they assume we believe what they believe. Yeah. And they assume that we're hypocrites trying to hide it. But we're supposed to have freedom of religion in this country. And the laws that protect us tonight also protect people who worship other gods. Is that right? And then some of these people would be adamant and in your face about protecting the rights of these people to worship other gods. Well, how much more us, we just believe God's a God of prosperity. Can you see this now? Should we not have a right to believe this? There is advancement that is to be made in these areas. Much more than you and I see right here tonight. What, what could this church do with another $300 million right now? 
What has the Lord helped us to do with the, a, a few million? Huh? But well, what if you multiply that by a hundred? Can you begin to see the importance of a people that believe in prosperity and have a bigger vision? So big, think big, talk big, shout big, reap big, do big, because we've got a big God. Well, you can't hide it and be ashamed of it and make progress in these things. Y'all believe with me on this, right? Believe with me. And uh, maybe we need to have a lot more teaching on it. Hmm? And a lot more meditation on it. <laughs> Some people don't think so, but <coughs> we do. Acts 4, are you there? They're having, they're having turmoil in the city over a healing. And the disciples have been threatened. And they come back to their own company. And verse 23 and 24, they lift up their voice to God and they pray. And verse 29, this is their request. They said, Lord, behold their threatenings. And uh, protect us. Don't let them hurt us. Please, God. They're mean. I think they're serious, too. How are we going to preach in Jesus' name? They'll hurt us. Oh, please. Nope. They've already made up their mind what they're doing. The Great Commission hasn't changed. The gospel hasn't changed. Do you think some leaders got huffy? God hasn't changed. Redemption hasn't changed. What are they going to do? They're going to preach just like they always have. And bigger and stronger and more. So we want more power. <laughs> We're going to back up. No. We're going to bump it up. We're going to increase. We're going to increase. Brother Kenneth Hagin, my, my father in the faith, he said that in the very beginning days of his ministry, God healed him supernaturally. He, uh, several doctors had given on him to die, and, and the best medical science of the day said he had to die, but God brought him up and healed him. Everybody in the town knew it, everybody around. And so he preached faith and healing the best he knew. And the particular denomination that his folks were in they, one, the fellow called him aside. One of the elders said, you know, no, we're ready to ordain you in, this, uh, in, in their organization, which is the only people he really knew. He said, but we really would like for you to, to just calm down and back off on this, this healing and faith stuff. <laughs> well, you know, that don't even make sense because he would be in the cemetery. His body would be in the cemetery instead of them even talking to him about an ordination. If it wasn't for faith and healing. And God. And he, he said, he looked at him, he said, back off, tone down. I was planning on bumping it up, <laughs> in, increasing. He said, the fellow said, well, just forget about it then. Just forget, just forget about it. So he didn't get ordained in that particular denomination. Thank the Lord. But with you and me, I said, you and me, yeah. on the healing, yeah. on the Holy Ghost, yeah. on the prosperity, yeah. what are we going to do? Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're not going to tone it down. We're not going to back off. We're going to increase. Yeah. We're going to increase. Yeah. Yep. yep. Glory to God. He said, behold, their threatenings. And grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word by stretching forth your hand. Let's just stop right here. We're talking about the moving of the Spirit. What is the hand of the Lord? You'll see different places where one phrase says the hand of the Lord and the very next phrase says the Spirit of God. 
the hand of the Lord is a, a relative, a, a degree, I should say, of the manifestation of the power of God. Sometimes it talks about the finger of God, talks about the hand of God, talks about the arm of God, different degrees of the finger power is one thing. Arm power is something else, right? The Bible said Jesus cast out devils by the finger of God. See, the devil ain't as big and bad nearly as he pumps himself up to be. Jesus said, shut up and come out. And the Holy Ghost went. That's right. That's right. There are times when the Bible talks about the hand of the Lord coming on people or whole groups. Well, that's a stronger manifestation. And then the Bible said uh, that the mighty arm of, of God was demonstrated when Jesus was raised from the dead. Why? It was not just a man raised from the dead. When he was raised, all of us were raised free from sin. God had to roll up his sleeve on that one. Oh, but he did. And the mighty power of God raised Jesus and all who would ever believe in Jesus free from death, hell, the grave, all sin, free forever. And he has done it. I said he has done it. Glory to God. Keep reading. He said, grant us to with all boldness we could speak your word by stretching forth your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of your holy child Jesus. Oh, do you see this? Do you see this? Is the Spirit, are they praying for the Spirit of God to move? Yes. Notice what comes first. Bold proclamation of the word. Then, Stretching forth of the hand, the manifestation of the power of God, the Spirit of God. What's associated with it? Healings, signs, wonders. To the glory of Paul and, and Peter and... No, no, no. By the name of your holy child Jesus, all these healings, all these signs, all these wonders are going to manifest the Word and they're going to magnify Jesus. Can you say amen? amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Do we have a desire for Jesus to be magnified and manifested in this place and from this place? Are healings a part of it? Yes. Or is prosperity a part of it? Yes. yes. And is it centered around the Word? Yes. Jesus in the beginning of it, in the middle of it, and in the end of it. Amen. Yes, 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 yes. Is this the moving of the Spirit? Yes. Verse 31, And when they had prayed, the place was shaken, where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spoke the Word of God with boldness. Man, that's the instantaneous answer to the prayer. Right? Boom! Right there. They must have, the Holy Ghost was in agreement with what they're praying. Right? They're, they're in line with Him, what He wants. What He desires. What He knows. Thank you, Master. Go back to the book of uh, Luke 4 and I think we'll close with this. Luke 4. We've seen it, we've talked about it, but let's repeat it. The Spirit of God moves to manifest the Word and to magnify Jesus, the Word. In Acts, the fourth chapter. Yeah, Luke. Thank you. We were in Acts 4. Now, Luke... Chapter 4, remember what we just got through reading? How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power. And he went about doing good and healing. Is healing good or bad? Well, then is sickness good or bad? 
It's bad. I mean, if you had the clarity of one of our three-year-olds in Faith Life Church, you'd just be so much better off. God is a good God. He does good things. The devil is a bad devil. He does bad things. If it's good, it's God. If it's bad, it's not God. It's the devil. So you have to grow up and get educated to get confused and think that God and the devil swap places sometimes. They're working together on some stuff. And if they are, we've had it. No, it's a lie. The psalmist said, God is good and he does good. And healing's good. Sickness is bad. Blessed is good. Broke is bad. Well, no, Brother Keith, I just believe the Lord's teaching me something in being behind on my bills and getting everything repossessed and getting kicked out of my place. I just know he's teaching me something. Well, why don't you hurry up and learn it so you can quit all this? Well, I just don't know what it is, Brother Keith. Yeah, all right. People go years, and the Lord's supposed to be teaching them something, and they ain't got a clue what it is. No, no. Now, you, do you wonder why I keep saying these things? Not everybody believes this. They're still looking like, well, now. Sometimes you just never know. Well, it's easier to believe that and perish than to take responsibility that we're supposed to find out the will of God and we're supposed to have faith and stand and resist. It's easier just to be lazy and just bump along and float along in life, whatever is is and whatever will be it's just all up to the Lord he told us to do something he told us to take authority use our faith be overcomers in Luke 4 we see what was described in Acts 10 Luke 4 Jesus had just come through the wilderness Temptation, chapter 4, verse 1, Jesus being what? Full of the Holy Ghost. He returned from Jordan and he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. And you know how he overcame every temptation, 40 days, 40 nights, but didn't give in one time. He's my hero. How about you? Verse 14, having come out, overcoming the temptation, Jesus returned, how? In the power of the Spirit. Would it have been the same if he had yielded to temptation? Would he have come out in the power? Do you see why the enemy works on us? Tempts us. Why? Not just so he can say, goody, goody, got you to sin. Because it keeps you faithless and powerless. Condemnation is the faith destroyer. You can't be full of guilt and shame and full of faith and power. You can't. Somebody says, well, what do I do, Brother Keith? I am full of guilt and shame. Confess your sin. Ask God to forgive you. Receive your forgiveness. Receive your righteousness restored. Now, if you're going to go do it again tomorrow, it's going to be hard to maintain any sense of righteousness. And if you just fall day after day after day, you're not going to live a powerful life. You're going to live a defeated life. Is there any connection between being obedient, keeping yourself separate and clean, 
and walking in greater faith, greater power. Jesus is the ultimate example now, isn't he? He did not yield at all. He didn't succumb to temptation at all. And here he comes. Oh, in the power of the Spirit. Read, read it. Put yourself here. Put yourself here. Here comes Jesus out of the wilderness. Hadn't eaten 40 days and nights, but he looks pretty powerful. He comes out in the power of the Spirit. And just in the next hours and the next days, a fame goes all around the community. Why? They knew him. They'd seen him. What's different now? What's different now? The moving of the Spirit. The demonstration of the Spirit. The manifestation of the Spirit. And power, power, power. And he taught in their synagogue. Being glorified of all. What does the Spirit do? Manifest the Word. Glorifies Jesus. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up and as his custom was. So he did this other places. He went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and he stood up for to read. And there was delivered to him a book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. And of all the scriptures... In all the word that he could have picked. This is the one. Out of all of them in Genesis and Exodus and Leviticus and Numbers and Deuteronomy and on and on and on. All the prophets, all the law. Out of all of them, he picks this. What does he say? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to preach and proclaim the good news to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. One thing we need to realize, how many times he said preach. Preach, preach, preach. Why? Because what does the Holy Ghost do? He manifests the Word. There's got to be the Word. Right? Well, I'm interested in the power. Well, you better get interested in the Word then. Because the power comes to confirm and manifest the Word. The Word. So to proclaim it, to proclaim it, the bolder we are, not arrogant now, but just confident, To proclaim the word of healing, the more power we're going to see manifested in healing. The bolder we are to proclaim the word of prosperity and plenty, the more power we'll see manifested. And it'll all be done in the way that Jesus is the most seen and the most exalted and the most glorified. And he closed the book and he said, this day, This scripture is fulfilled in your ears. You know, it talks about prior to this, you know, when he, uh, there's, if you put all the Matthew, Mark, and Luke together, you see when he first came out, he went into certain places and demons cried out and they said, oh, we know you, we know you. Have you come to torment us before the time? You know, why any child of God would be afraid of a demon is just silly. They're little defeated, bodily, bodiless A lot of them monkey-like little imp creatures that are scared of you. Did you hear me? And they hollered and said, oh, don't hurt us. Don't hurt us. Don't hurt us. You've come to torment us. (laughs) This is what uh, Christians huddle up because they've seen too many dumb movies. Did you hear me? They said too many dumb movies. Are these great, big, awful, hairy demons? They're scared of you. If you know who you are, they're scared of you. And 
people were delivered and people were healed and the services were shook and he taught with power and people had left and said, whoo, glory to God, did you feel that power? Man, he don't talk like the scribes. He's not talking philosophy and footnotes and Greek and Hebrew. It's power. It's power. Healing, deliverance, power. Can you say amen? amen. Say it out loud. I have faith, I have faith. In, the power of God. in the power of God. Stand up on your feet. Say it out loud. I have faith, I have faith. in the power of God. I have faith in the power of God. Oh, Father, we worship you tonight. Lift up your hands. Lift up your voices. Lord, we exalt you. We give you glory, we give you glory, we give you glory. Oh, we worship you, we worship you, we worship you. Thank you, Lord. 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 Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let's pray this out loud here tonight. Close your eyes. Say it out loud. Thank you, Father, for revealing the truth to us. You are a good God, and you do good. You heal, you deliver, you work miracles. You're a good God. We pray. Let your anointing, let boldness come upon us all that we may speak your word unafraid, unashamed, without timidity, without reservation, without apology, that we may boldly Declare, proclaim your word, your goodness. We ask you, stretch forth your hand. Let your mighty power, your mighty spirit be manifested, demonstrated. Power to heal, signs and wonders. Miracles manifested to the glory of our Lord Jesus. Amen. Oh, thank you, Lord. Come on, just praise Him some tonight. Lord, we thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, praise. Lord, praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Oh, praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Oh, praise you. Praise you. Praise you. Praise you. Praise you, praise you, Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Get glory to yourself, Lord. Get glory to yourself. Get glory to yourself. Get glory to yourself. Hallelujah. Let's sing about the glory of God. Hallelujah. Let's sing about the glory of God tonight. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Any song y'all want to sing about the glory of God, just go ahead and take off. Oh, thank you, Lord.
something from the Lord. You can receive tonight and then you can just be using your faith for somebody else next Friday night. So as we sing this again and your faith is ready to believe that you receive something, you just believe you receive and you speak the word of God over it and call it healed according to the word. Call yourself free according to the word and the spirit of God is hovering to manifest. Oh, the glory is he this as we go. The glory is here. You can sing it in your house, in your bedroom, and just bask in the presence of God and believe that He manifests Himself and His Spirit of God moves in your life on a regular basis. Sing it as we go. Oh, His mighty presence in the very atmosphere. Oh, whatever you 